Miras team urging him on. He finished second here in 2005 to Dan Weldon. Oh, he almost oh. wiggled there. Uh, that's because he's not lifting off. He's just got his foot flat on the gas. You can't lift now. Three laps to go, this time by. What will be the gap? Remember, it was four tenths of a second on the last lap. And it's now six tenths of a second. That little wiggle costing two tenths. Two tenths. I have a feeling, I'm not quite sure, but I think Dixon might have been a little bit worried about yeah. the fuel and he tried to save a little bit for two laps because he, he just pulled out more distance again. Go get him, go get him. You can hear the spotter Dick still urging him. Dixon ran 221 that last time. Yeah. Vitor Mir, 219. I'm not so sure that Dixon, as you mentioned, that he was sort of hitting back of and just sitting back a little bit and conserving. You're getting a little oh, excited. No, about this, look at this traffic. should be right going into one. Oh, no. You've got two laps remaining in the Indianapolis 500. Get out of the way. Dixon get out of the way, has got traffic. Way. He makes it. He gets oh, through. That's it. If he has another problem, he's won the 500. Go by. Mira clears. But now there's going to be more lap traffic. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. A lot of the drivers have pulled off the racetrack, but this one decides to stay on, but he does get passed cleanly. That was John Andretti, gave him plenty of room. But it's the next one. It looks like Mira is losing ground because of the lap traffic. Here we go. The white flag is about to be shown to Scott Dixon. Remember, he finished second here last year. That's Buddy Lazier in front of him, the 1996 winner. Lazier, seven come on, laps come on, down. Come on, come on, come on, not in between. Bring it home. He's down the back stretch. Remember, at the beginning of the day, we talked about the perfect storm. Well, for Scott Dixon, his storm started last year at Chicago when he lost the race and the championship on the final turn of the final lap of the final race. But not today. Coming through turn number four, Scott Dixon is going to complete his perfect storm with a win at the Indianapolis 500. Exceptional. Take your time and away to those people, Scott. Great job, man. Woo! Good job, boys. Good job. Woo! Congratulations, Scott. Great job. A big piece of history and the start of a legacy. And there's not a person standing here from our broadcast booth. We look out in the front stretch. There is not a person that is sitting in their seats. They are all standing. You mentioned Rick Mears as you see the family holding hands. Mears is spotting for Elio in turn three as he goes zooming by him one more time. You can literally feel the excitement of the public willing him on to win this race. I think Everybody this place has lived its experience. I think this place is going to explode when he crosses the finish line if he holds on to this. Two to go. The Indianapolis 500 is down to the Indy 5. There is Dan Weldon and Danica Patrick, the best they have been able to muster. They are 2.3 and 2.8 seconds behind race leader Elio Castroneves. It's been a good day, but not quite good enough. Michael Andretti, Marco Andretti, of course, not in the race. And this is his best shot after Tony Kanaan also crashed, but it looks like third may be the spot where she ends up as here we go through turn four, heading for the white flag here at Indianapolis. Flagman, look at the Brian crowd. Howard. Look at Listen the, to the crowd. Keep going. One lap to go. Two and a half miles, four corners. And Roger Penske doesn't even crack a smile. Never. But he knows what he's about to experience as well. Down the back straight away for the final time. One mile to go. Two corners. This crowd, look at him, just saluting him. Five weeks ago, Elio Castroneves was staring at jail. An orange suit, not a race suit. And now he becomes a three-time winner of the biggest race in the world. Elio Castroneves wins at Indy. Back, back. And now 
Dario Franchitti, 4.9 seconds ahead of Dan Weldon. Three laps to go next time by. But the fuel is in question right now. Has he been able to save enough fuel? Will he make it all the way? Or will this be one of these situations where the car coughs possibly in the last lap or even the last turn? It is really difficult to get all the fuel out of a fuel tank like that. You can't count on every little bit coming out of it. There's the gap, as we can show you, to second place, Dan Weldon. They're coming down the front straightaway. So three laps remaining. Frankiti, the second car in your screen, has the lap traffic in front of him. He clears him easily. He's in the south chute, heading through two. The question now is only about fuel. He has led 152 of 197 laps. And Marty, all the top guys right now, Frankiti, Weldon, and Andretti, all stopped at the same time for fuel. So who's been the best here to save, or will they all run out? Frankiti's last lap at only 208 miles an hour. Weldon at 214. Here we come down the front straightaway once again. This time by, there will be two laps remaining. Five miles. He needs to let that car behind him pass him and drag him around for the rest of the lap. He's going slow enough. He's 202 that last lap. Take your Weldon time. at 206. Take your time. Well, this is one now. This is incredible. Everybody saving the fuel. He is almost at a snail's pace considering how fast he was running earlier in the race. They could get out and almost run faster now. That's what he's doing. He's letting that other car get up ahead of him. Coming by the next time, it will be the white flag here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Everyone in the grandstands are on their feet. Can he make it? Can he make it? Two and a half more miles. Weldon is three seconds behind. There's Weldon, the top of your screen. He's letting everybody go by. He's doing everything he can to save fuel. And Weldon, can he close? It's 3.6 seconds as they head through one. Oh, we've got a crash. Oh, a wicked crash involving two cars at least. He's won it. He's going to win it. Frankiti has won it. Ryan Hunter Ray involved in this. I could, not, take the warm -up lane. I could not see who else was involved from our angle. If he can make it to the stripe, and they told him to take the warm-up lane, the RL guy up here to take the warm-up lane. So he is Dan already Moore. in the warm-up lane. And Dario Franke, 45 years ago, his idol, Jimmy Clark, won his one and only Indy 500. And oh, my, what a mess in that corner. There's his wife. Today, Dario will pass his childhood hero and win his second Indianapolis 500 as he is able to coast across if he has to now and Dan Weldon for the second year in a row will finish second right behind him. What an incredible finish. <laughs> Ashley hey, baby, check a flag. <laughs> can't believe it. Chip has won. Daytona 500, and now the Indianapolis 500. No car owner has ever pulled off that feat in the same year. Three laps remaining. Let's go back and show you the pass. It was for second place at the time, and now the 23-year-old rookie is in the race lead. Only at Indy. Next time by, two laps remaining. Rick, give us an update on J.R. Hildebrand. Well, let's talk about what happened last year. That's what's significant. Dan Weldon was driving for Panther at the time. Remember, he pitted early. He saved fuel at the beginning of the stint. As a result, because he saved fuel at the beginning of the stint, Weldon was able to run fast at the end, at the very end of the race. They've done the same thing with J.R. Hildebrand. He pitted early, saved fuel at the beginning of the stint,
advantage, so you have it to run at the end, and that's what he's doing right now. Could he be the next rookie winner of the Indy 500? His last lap was at 216. Well, Scott Dixon has gotten around, and so has Dan Weldon. Dan Dario Franchitti is fourth, so his chances look like they have faded for the year. Here comes J.R. Hildebrand, this time by the white flag is in hand. The 23-year-old from Sausalito, California. Listen to the crowd cheer him on. And how fitting for the National Guard card to win if he can indeed do that. Has he got enough fuel to make it to the end? Half a lap. He's got half a lap to go, and he's the Indy 500 champion. Panther Racing, oh so good. They finish second here. Twice here they come again through the final two corners. J.R. Hildebrand. Careful the of traffic. He's got to get around the lap. Traffic. One hundred years ago. No, no. no. He hit the wall. Oh, Just like my Thomas goodness. Schenker. Keep Just your like foot Schenker. on the gas. Dan Weldon is going to win the race. That is unbelievable. Oh, my goodness. Weldon, after finishing second the last two years, wins when J.R. Hildebrand hits the wall coming out of four, just as Schechter did. What a tremendous finish. What a drive for Weldon. It's Dixon, then Franchitti, then Takuma Sato, and Tony Kanan is now back to fourth. Five laps remaining here at Indianapolis. Foot is down, no lifting whatsoever, clicking off laps as fast as you can go. And the two Target Ganassi cars are trying to pull away from the field. Coming down the front straightaway. Four to go. You heard it. Clean Four laps to go. Clean pass. Outside. 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 Clear, clear. All right. Clear, clear. I want to set this up. One. Where do you want to be? At what lap do you make your move? Do you want to be leading or do you want to be the second place guard? With the way they're flipping back and forth here right now, who knows who's going to lead on the very last lap, but I think I want to be second, probably going into turn three, Eddie. <sighs> it, it really depends on who's running third at this point. I think if the two Ganassi cars keep playing nice with each other up to the end, they're guarding the position. So maybe, like you said, you'd be better off if you're leading that last lap. Now he's going to pass him again, and it's a clean pass. And does he get him by the strike? Yes, he does. So it can be done. That sure is all clear, all close. Clear. It was close. Well, he wasn't defending that time, Marty. I can exactly. assure you. When well, you're coming out of four, by you're going to be moving around the racetrack. And you can move a little bit, maybe in turn three. You can move a little bit coming off of four. Takuma Sato trying to get up closer. Now frankini has got a problem with Sato, and he's, and he's guarding the position. Now will he try and go for the pass? This time by, there will be two laps remaining. Sato's car, I don't think has as much downforce because he certainly seems to slide mid-turn. I think he's got Going him. down the straight. Now two. You heard the call. Here comes Dario. And well, Sato may try and come with him. Look out. This could get tricky. Oh, and he slides on by. Sato takes by four to Sato. And Kanan is going to make a run on him now. So Frank Keedy out in front. Takuma Sato in second. There's Dixon. And then Tony Kanan. On board with Tony. If he wants a shot, he's got to get some help up front. He's too far back right now. Next time by, the white flag. I think Sato's in the capper You're position right. now. Time it right, you have to time it right. Everybody flag, standing, flag, listen flag, to the crowd. White flag is out. Dario Franchitti takes the defensive line into one. Sato taking a peek. Oh, inside, they are inside, 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 inside. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, buddy. Yellow, yellow, yellow. The yellow is out. Waited. Should have waited to coming out of two. We talked about that. We talked about his patience. And for the third time in his career, Dario Franchitti is going to win the 500, and all three times it's going to be under caution. This is a race where you cannot make a mistake. I, that was very hard. Sada was oh. close, but he, I think he got on that white line again. He did. Tony Kanaan is going to finish third. Remember, results are not official. We'll get word from IndyCar. But right now, 
Here they come down the front straightaway. And Dario Franchitti is going to join uh, an elite group as he is going to become a three-time winner at Indianapolis. What a race. What a race. You are the man. <laughs> awesome job, champ. Way to go. Why Congratulations, three-time winner. We know she can count to three. She just proved it. Ryan hunter -Ray, Tony Kanan, Carlos Munoz, that's your top three. Then it is Marco Andretti, Justin Wilson, and don't count out Elio Castroneves. He is running in sixth with A.J. Allmendinger, seventh. Sit back if you can. We're on the edge of our seats. Here we go. Second, <laughs> Munoz. Look who's first, Tony Kanan. Contact yellow is out. And it is Dario Franchitti. Yellow, turn one. Yellow, and this yellow, one yellow, may yellow, not yellow, get cleaned yellow. up in time. <laughs> Look at Lauren, she knows it. It may be over. Why isn't Kanan lifting? I don't think he knows yet. He, he better know. For the car. Yeah, they told him. Yellow, yellow. We got two laps to go, and uh, Tony Kanan is leading. Back it up, buddy. Back it up. Slow it down. Absolutely amazing for Tony Kanan as he makes the move, and you heard him say it's going to be all or nothing, and he gave it his all. I don't know if he knew that there was going to be problems behind him. But in his 12th attempt at Indianapolis, where he has led nine different races, all he has to do is follow the pace car for the milk. And they never touched his car the whole race. Remember I mentioned he was not fast during practice or really even qualifying. He sort of had a quiet month. So we see everybody standing up. Isn't that so cool? He's having flashes of memories going through his head now when he was racing go-karts and how many accidents he's had. It's, a, it's so great to see this. Let's listen to the crowd as it comes around four. <laughs> At the beginning of our broadcast, we talked about the friendship between Tony Kanan and Elio Castroneves. And Tony said, he's got three, I don't have any. He's about a half a lap away from having his first. Let's go back and show you what happened on the restart. We talk about Ryan Hunter Ray, the leader, whoever that is, is a sitting duck. One car goes low, one car goes high. And there was no way he was going to give up that corner. What also is amazing, the rookie Carlos Munoz is going to finish second in an outstanding performance. Ryan Hunter Ray will come across the line in third. You think he was drawing out his eyes there, Scott? Oh, absolutely. Raising his visor. Probably just trying to get the tears out of his eyes so he can stay in the track, see where he's going. This whole place is standing buddy, up. Wife Lauren, as he makes the turn out of turn four. After years of frustration, the satisfaction of knowing his name will go on the board Warner Trophy, the winner.
Three to go, three to go. Casanova sets up high to get a run for Hunter Ray in the back straight. And if these drivers tangle, Munoz is fourth, Montoya is fifth, Kurt Busch is sixth. Hunter Ray going all the way down to the bottom to try to break the toe. Hello, Casanova says exactly the same thing again, sets up high. Marco's car slid there, not sure he has what he needs to get to the front. Big run. Outside. Clear, clear. What a pass. Castro Nevis, the leader. They'll come to the white flag next time. Here comes Andretti. Here comes Hunter Ray. Hunter Ray got him into three the last time. Defensive line by Castro Nevis. He's going to have to do it this time. Here they come to the white flag. We'll enter the final lap of the Indianapolis 500. Ryan Hunter Ray to the outside of Elio Castro Nevis for the race lead. That kind of drafting warm up the photo finish cameras. Half a lap to go. Ryan Hunter Ray leads. Elio Castro Nevis is second. Can Castro Nevis close on him? He's a couple of car lengths back. One last corner to go. Checkered flag is in the air. Here comes Castro Nevis. He won't get there. Florida's Ryan Hunter Ray wins the Indianapolis 500. Captain America pulled it off. Awesome, man. Awesome.